Welcome into the Coach Shinnick Show. Will Kennedy along with UWF head football coach Pete Shinnick. This is our bye week edition of the Coach Shinnick Show. Halfway through the season, falls perfectly this year. We're going to kind of take the temperature, get a checkup on where the program stands at this point. But first of all, Coach, coming off a you know, homecoming win that we talked about on the last show, 48 to 3 over Delta State. I imagine that that feeling is still hanging around a little bit, although I know you got to move on to the next thing, but but feeling to have. Well, you do need to move on. Is you get to move on with that type of victory behind you. Um, your team played well. Uh, you saw a lot of really good things. To you know, really challenge ourselves to get better and to find ways and areas that we need to improve, so that we can finish the season the way we want to. It's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. A football season, the ten games that you guys will play. What has stood out to you the most? You know, it can be more than one thing in this first half of the season. Well, I, I just I like how our team continues to believe in each other, continue to support each other. Um, you know, we obviously lost our first game, but have rebounded well from that. Uh, you know, I've seen this team just continue to support each other. They've told each other that uh, you know we're there for you, and we've kind of built on that. And really probably played our best football uh, of the year, but probably in a long time, beating Delta State the way we did. Four and one at the halfway point, three and oh in conference play. I know you like where you sit as far as those things are concerned. In the national rankings, may move up, who knows, you know, depending, even in a bye week, it's nice to move mm -hmm. up in the polls if you can. But there's always unexpected things that happen, and, and you know, let's talk a little bit about the offensive side of the ball. Austin Reed steps in in that first game that you mentioned, that loss, and kind of generates some offense for you. He has really been outstanding. He was the GSC Freshman of the Week coming off the Delta State win. 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. He's really kind of been everything you needed him to be. He has, and he's accepted that role well, and he's continued to improve and continued to look for ways uh, to get better. And we've thrown the ball less in the last two games, but we've still been very productive in the passing game. So uh, he's really been able to handle that. Um, you know, we threw the ball a lot early, uh, really just kind of finding our way a little bit. And he's been able to, you know, be good in a lot of passes, be good with a few classes. So excited about him and him continuing to grow and develop in our offense. We talked in the preseason about all the weapons that you had in a receiving core for whoever the quarterback was going to be to take advantage of. We've seen that and then some as you've gone deeper and deeper into that sure. roster of wide receivers. They've been outstanding. But you mentioned the running game, kind of shifting the offensive focus a little bit in the last few games. You have four guys who have all rushed for 100 yards or more. Austin's right behind them, I think, at 91. That's really been a dynamic difference with this offense. It has been. And when you have an athletic quarterback who can run and you, you, know, you feature him, and we, we have. We've, we've had some quarterback design runs. We've had a lot of quarterback draws and then some scrambles. It does open up for your running backs. And, you know, Anthony Johnson leads the way, but very close behind him are three guys that have all had good games in Jaden Garner and uh, Shamari Mason and Jervon Newton. You know, all four of those guys really bring to the table uh, something special, something different, and something that defenses have to account for. Yeah, definitely. They've made life miserable first from the defenses you faced. Let's talk about your defensive side of the ball. You talked throughout the early part of the season. There were some big plays that I know you, you wanted to clean up and move on from, but scoring defense has been outstanding. You've been able to really see them step forward in the last couple of weeks, 13 sacks through five games. They've, they've dialed up the pressure. They're forcing turnovers. They're kind of doing all the things. And you said this talent on this defense was as good as you can kind of have seen in a while, maybe ever here with this program in, in the short four years. But they have, they're kind of rising to the level I know you wanted them to be at. Yeah, I think we're as deep as we've ever been. And I think our one-two punch across the board uh, when you look at who's playing and the number of reps that guys are playing. I mean, our defensive line goes about nine deep. Our secondary goes about nine deep. Our, our linebackers go about eight deep. So we're playing a lot of people, getting a lot of productivity. I think you're seeing fresh legs out there. You're seeing guys making great decisions. And then our defensive staff is really dialing up some nice combinations, depending on who we're playing, what they need to do. Uh, the points that we're giving up are few and far between. Uh, we got to see that continue, obviously, as we go through this last stretch of five straight conference games. Uh, our guys have got to continue to be uh, on point in what they're doing and how they're doing it. Last phase of the game, special teams. We've seen the return game get really close. Feel like that's going to break free at some point here. We'll probably see a touchdown or kick return or punt return coming. What about the kicking game? Where do you, where do you stand with that right now? Yeah, I think everything but field goals we feel very good about. I think our kickoffs and coverage have been great, our punts and coverage have been great. Uh, Dawson's over 45 a game, 44 a game, something like that. 
Um, you know, our returns, as you mentioned, uh, we've been getting a lot of punt returns. Uh, Karan Ashley and Dimitri Birch back there really doing a great job. I think they're both averaging about 10 yards a pop. So uh, I, you know, I, I, what I see, I feel like we can get better at, but at the same time, we're getting great productivity, changing the field position. Winning the field position is one of our constant uh, talking points to our team. Touchdowns in the red zone are always big. You'll just keep taking those, right? We, we no can, doubt. We can, if we can avoid field goals, we will. We'll, we'll try to score seven. No All right, coming up next here on the Coach Shinnick Show, we're going to break down the West Georgia game coming up this week and also look at that back half of the schedule that Coach mentioned. Stay right here. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. The Argos are back in action this week, making a road trip up to West Georgia. What, what a weird schedule to start the year. Two games on the road, then three straight at home. Now it kind of gets maybe a little bit more of your traditional look at sure. a schedule. West Georgia started the season in the top 25. It's been a little bit of uh, some tough sledding for them. They've lost a couple games uh, early in the season, but they still feel like they're in the hunt as far as the conference is concerned. And they're a tough opponent. Last year they, they, you know, they, they handled us, and, and I know you want to return the favor. Well, yeah, they played us very well last year, and one of the games that um, you know we had opportunities but never really capitalized on them. You know, the 20 to seven loss. Uh, I felt like we were there. We had a couple of fourth downs that we went forward in the fourth quarter, didn't get any points out of it, didn't kick field goals, that type of thing. Uh, I still think they're a dangerous football program uh, just because of their tradition, playing at their place. It's homecoming. They've got a lot, uh, you know, going into this game. You know, but as we always talk about, you know, what are we going to do and, and how are we going to respond? And, um, you know, I, I feel like every game we got coming up is going to be going to be a big one. So we just got to go out, take care of our business, do what we do uh, and play to the level that we're capable of uh, while, you, you know, taking advantage of opportunities that are given to us. You know, the Delta State game is a great, you know, example. You know, we sat there at the end of it and go, wow, you know, 48-3. OK, don't know if we saw that coming. But if we play our best, I mean, we can see that coming a few times. It, it's a mantra. I think we've all uh, kind of internalized it now. Not, it's not who you play, it's how you play. And I know you like to say that to your team. And West Georgia goes, they lose to Albany State, you know, third week of the season. And then kind of a shocker for them on, you know, like Delta State, you were mentioning that game, as they lose to Florida Tech in a big way. But they have some talent. Their quarterback is really good. I think he's set their, their mark. It's a lot of passing marks career-wise. Uh, you've seen him. You kind of know what you get there. And they run the ball effectively, too. They do. I mean, we thought their running back a year ago, I mean, who's in the NFL right now, was very good. But we felt his backup was fantastic. <laughs> and now he's the starter. Uh, he's averaging, uh, you know, close to 100 a game, if not right around there. Uh, Willie, their quarterback, has been there forever, um, and he's, a, he's as good as he's ever been. So we know we have challenges. Again, going to their place, uh, we've had success there, but that was two years ago. So now we got to find a way to, you know, get back to the place that we want to be. The bye week, we wanted to get better. We feel good about that. We feel like the, the improvements have been made. Now we got to go out and play it and see how it plays out. Where do you see advantages that you can take with their defense? West well, Georgia. I think, you know, their, their defense is a little different than they were a year ago. Um, we feel like we can get some of the matchups, some of the um, things that we've been able to do. Uh, we got to be really crisp and sharp. They do play like Delta, a lot of man coverage, a lot of different looks. 
Um, they really, really shut our run game down a year ago, and that's a point of emphasis for us. Will we be able to run the ball this year? Will we be able to get some things going? Uh, again, they pose some issues and problems for us. Um, but again, we just got to go out and play to the way I think we're capable of. Having that effective running game, and we saw it against Delta, you know, opens up that play action, really pulls the defense in. Same kind of situation with West same, Georgia. Same thought process. And again, I think, you know, we went into this year saying we wanted to be a much better play action team. We went in this year saying we got to be able to run the ball and be able to, uh, you know, give our backs some freedom because we felt like we had a group that could be very effective. Uh, so every team we're going to have a similar approach. How we get to it, you know, that that's all part of the, you know, scheming up and, and what we do. But, you know, we feel like if we can run it well, obviously that sets up some other things. And then we've got enough in the passing game where I feel like we got some good combinations where we can get some matchups of our guys on players that we feel like they can go out and catch the ball. You mentioned the back half of this schedule, starting with West Georgia here, the five straight conference games in a row to close this thing out. You're coming off the bye week. Is it igniting that fire in the belly of this team, keeping them hungry and focused on the task? Most definitely, and really that was the you know, it was really all our focus all, all through the bye week and now you know into our West Georgia week of just, hey, we got to get better, we got to continue to improve, we got a lot of work in front of us, great that we got done what we did in the first half, uh, but you know we, we, we want to be better in the second half, we, we want to improve from that. So coming into this game this week, you know, we're fired up to be able to now go back, play, and continue the success that we've had in the three previous conference games. Back in action, you mentioned West Georgia this week. That'll be 12.30. We'll be on the radio, ESPN Pensacola, and then a 1 o'clock kick local time, 2 o'clock Eastern time. Good luck to you this week, Coach. Thank you. Coming Appreciate up next, it. we'll talk to your, your senior linebacker. He's, mm -hmm. he's good on the field. He's good in the classroom. He's good just about everywhere. Oh, Josh Smiley's coming up next here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. Each week we like to spend some time with one of the UWF football players, get to know you a little bit better. This week it's Josh Smiley, a, a senior here, linebacker on the football team. One of the originals, right? You, you've been here since the beginning. What's that been like for you? It's been a journey. I can tell you that. It's been a journey. You are not just a, an incredible athlete on the field and one of the leaders on the defense, but uh, and we'll get into this in a little bit. You, this guy, class schedule, some of the things you're doing, some of the things you've been involved in when it comes to academics and, mm -hmm. and getting ready for your career after football. But let's talk about the football first. This defense this year, being here from the beginning, it seems you know, to me that the depth, yeah. uh, the level of athleticism on this defense and the ability to have two, three, four guys at a position come in and play, you guys are really coming into your own. Yeah, so I, I just feel like the recruiting that we have done like over like the summer to, to now has just really stepped us up this year in the, compared to the past years as far as depth and like as position wise we have like the like most talent we have in the years past how is it for you i mean maybe a guys you been used to being out there more plays you know now is it i imagine it's a little easier on the body right <laughs> yeah, but, but do you get frustrated at all sometimes not being out there or? no so it's just basically bigging up your, your teammates and just helping them out like whenever they're down or whenever they're messing up you can build them up and likewise whenever i'm down i need help or they build me up so it's just 
being a good teammate to your like, fellow teammates. Definitely the camaraderie. I mean, if you have seen these guys, the turnover shield, now there's a backboard <laughs> on it. We're dunking <laughs> basketballs. I mean, developing traditions, that's got to be cool. You know, as someone who's been here from the beginning to kind of see mm -hmm. these things develop and become something that you know will carry on in the future. Yeah, hopefully it does carry on. Because for me right now, I'm like taking it all in and like probably like another month or so, I'll like really digest it, but it's just, everything's hitting me. Well, you're enjoying the ride. I know that <laughs> yeah. for sure. Now, you were telling me you're from Montgomery, Alabama. When you're coming out of high school as, as a football player, what did you know about Pensacola? What did you know about the University of West Florida when you're, you're kind of going through that recruiting process? Well, I didn't know about the University of West Florida, but growing up, my dad used to come down here to Pensacola Beach and we used to just have vacations over the summer here. So I knew about Pensacola, but I didn't know about University of West Florida. And you're glad you're here? Yeah. Enjoy the beach and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. Montgomery's got a river, but it doesn't have no, the white sands a, yeah. and all that, all that good stuff. <laughs> now, you, this guy, you were telling me in the spring, I think you said you took seven classes. Yeah, and that's while spring football hours. practice is going on. You have 15 hours. You're taking six here in the fall yeah. while you're in season. What's your major and how do you juggle all this? So it's mechanical engineering, and I'm pretty much in a library to close it every night, pretty much. What, what's the toughest class for you? Um, dynamic systems is like probably wow. the hardest one because the homework for that is like ridiculous. Midterms hitting right on the bye week, so that's yeah. that, that's a good thing. Yeah, you, you were involved, I think, in the, in the team competition where you guys went and competed. Mm -hmm. Kind of tell us about that. So what happened is um, I was I'm part of the SAE Arrow. That's like a mechanical um, like elective that we have here, and we went to Fort Fort Worth, Texas, and the competition involved um, building model airplanes, RC airplanes. Um, control airplanes but what we did we had to load had to put like a load inside of it and had to take off fly around this track this field whatever and land and just basically we had like the program like the competition was sponsored by Lockheed Martin wow so we, we like we had like got some like phone numbers and information from, like from like big league people we had like different universities come from all around the world China Germany like from all around the world all across U the United States Mexico like it was a big competition with like very diverse like people coming. How'd you do? We came in like middle of the line, middle of the pack, I would say that. Good experience though? Definitely good. It was our first time coming, like first time like like it was the first time UWF was represented at this competition. So. Look at you setting new marks all the way through <laughs> football, on the field, off the field. What what do you want to do after graduation? So I want to go and like work for the Air Force, and so basically I, I'm going to be going interviewing at Eglin Air Force Base. Um, close by, yeah, yeah, really close by. And I just want to get into aerospace, so I want to get into like the design components of it. And maybe maybe leave with the national championship on the football field before <laughs> yeah, we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, very good, Josh. Riley, looking forward to seeing you. A bunch of tackles against West Georgia this bunch week. Bunch of tackles. All right, coming up next, we'll dive into some of the other fall sports that are going on right here on the University of West Florida campus here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get off stake. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. Look at that. Five glorious inches of Whataburger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies. But what if it's too much fresh beef? 
stacked too high with too much melted cheese and too many fresh cut veggies. Well, we have a four inch burger like a lot of other places. We just call it a junior. Good thing there's a burger made just for you. Good thing there's Whataburger. Welcome back in. Time to talk some soccer now. Coach Bill Elliott with the UWF men's soccer team joins us. And, and Coach, you guys are road warriors right now. Out on the road, a couple games uh, up, up kind of Georgia route over the last weekend and then off to Alabama for the next. Let's, let's talk about your season so far. Off to a pretty good start. Yeah, it's a really good start. Uh, I think we're at 8-1-1 one one right now. And uh, we've... Um, had a really good run, but it's uh, it's it's in the part of the season where it becomes a grind. We've been on the road a lot, had a huge four-day swing up through Tennessee, Memphis, uh, then another four-day swing up to the other side of the state, East Tennessee to Lee, and then Rome, Georgia, shorter, and now we're on the road again this weekend. So it's uh, I think we figured out that we were uh, gone eight nights out of eleven. That's tough on the kids too, on, on your players. I mean, they, we, we talk about this all the time with, with mm -hmm. the athletes here at the University of West Florida. They are student athletes in the truest sense of the word. I mean, many of them taking some fairly difficult <laughs> class yeah, schedules absolutely. even during season. That's gotta be tough to be on the road like oh, that. Oh, it is. It's, it's tough on the kids. It really is tough on them. And uh, but they do a good job. Uh, we, we, we conduct study halls in the hotel lobbies and things like that and uh, try to keep them uh, on top of it. But it is challenging. I mean, you. Your sleep patterns are disrupted, your nutritional patterns disrupted, um, trying to keep up with classes, trying to compete on the field, and uh, it's not easy. I know you like to test yourself before the conference schedule, and obviously the Gulf South Conference is, is difficult. Week in and week out, no matter who you're playing. You were telling me before we started here that you know you guys go out and have to play on different size fields, all that kind of thing. That can, that can make it difficult uh, game in and game out, but you've got experience on this team. How are your, your leaders playing, you know, Sean and Ed and some of those guys at this point of the season? Well, we do have experience. Uh, that's, a, that's a big advantage because, you know, we were down at shorter, uh, three to one, and I think a less experienced team would have, uh, would have, been, would have folded, but we, had to, we knew through past experiences that we could come back, and we did, and uh, had chances to go on and win the game, but we just didn't. Playing on all these different, you know, one unique thing about soccer is the field is, is falls in a range. And so, and, and if your field was built before a certain time, it gets grandfathered in, so it could even be smaller. And so it, it provides some challenges and uh, different types of styles of soccer are, are successful in those different environments and different types of players. And when you don't play in those places on a regular basis, Shorter was one of those. I mean, the field was only 64 yards wide. It's an old turf field. So it takes some time to adapt during the game. You are 10 games in, I think, as you mentioned. Uh, how do you see the back half of this uh, schedule setting up for you? Challenging because, uh, I mean, feel like we kind of enter it with the target on our back. We're nationally ranked. We have been for several weeks, and I know that that's – always up on the bulletin board of the of your opponents when you're in that position. And we've got some really good teams we're going to face. Everybody in our conference is, uh, you know, fighting and scratching to try to make the tournament. And so there's no easy ones. You've got to show up every time because, uh, you know, there's a lot of really good teams. And then the teams even that are find themselves on the bottom right now, they're backed into a corner, so they're dangerous. they got to get a point or they got to get three points. And so you got to come with a good mentality prepared to – weather the storm and try to persevere. You get everybody's best, we know that. Eight one and one, four one and one in conference play. And you mentioned at UAH on the 18th, at West Alabama on the 20th. We'll get you back here on home soil before too long, Hopefully. right? Hopefully. <laughs> All right, good luck to you. All Coming right. up next, we'll check in women's soccer and some of the other sports that are in action here in the fall at the University of West Florida. Keep it right here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind 
and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back into the Coach Chinnick Show. We're talking about the other fall sports here at the University of West Florida that are in action. Women's soccer, they've been busy. As we talked to Coach Bill Elliott last segment with the men's team, Coach Joe Bartlinski and the ladies out on the road quite a bit. Lots of long road trips. They split a pair on their last road trip, winning at Shorter 2-0 and then losing to number 18 Lee 1-0 with a goal in the 86th minute. They will be on the road, that Alabama trip, on the 18th at UAH and on the 20th at West Alabama, looking to pick up some more wins for the Argos. Cross country, spent some time over in Tallahassee at the FSU Invitational. Turned out to be a great meet for both teams. The women went out, finished 17th overall, but four Argo runners with personal best or season best times in this meet. Valeria Villatoro with a UWF best finish for the women and the men finished 11th overall, fourth among D2 teams, finishing with better times than some conference rivals in Valdosta and some regional rivals as well. Overall, just a fantastic showing for both programs. We caught up with Coach Caleb Carmichael after the event. I thought today was pretty good. I mean, last week was a really fast course, cool conditions. Today we had some cool conditions and uh, I thought we could have ran comparable to what we did last week. Uh, I think we did for the most part. We matched up well with some of the teams in our region today, which is really what we wanted to see in comparison. Uh, but I thought a pretty good day. I mean, honestly, running close to what you can on a course last week, uh, it's really what we wanted at going into this race. And I think we kind of checked off some boxes. We beat some conference opponents and also some regional teams. On the women's side, I think we had a much better day than last week. I think as a complete race, we ran uh, better. I mean, from one through, one through seven, we had a better day. Uh, we, I think in some cases we ran faster than last week, which is impressive. On, a, on a probably a tougher course. Uh, and we beat some teams. You know, obviously we came in here with, a, with an idea. We wanted to beat some conference opponents, some regional opponents. And, and a couple spots here and there, I think we can make a difference. And at conference in a couple weeks, we'll, we'll show up. Up next for both cross country teams, the GSC Championships, October 26th, up in Montevallo, Alabama. UWF swimming and diving 8-0 and now on the season. They get things rolling in the fall. They'll continue out throughout the year. Three more victories at a meet up in Birmingham where they beat Rhodes College, Millsap, and Birmingham Southern. Esther Rosetto, our friend here on the show, finishes first in the 50, the 100, and the 200 free, sweeping all those events. Yel Dinelli wins the 200 back and the 400 IM in Morgan Ayers. Both the 100 and 200 breast swim team off to a great start. They will be in action over in Tallahassee again against North Florida, Florida Southern and FSU. That comes our way November 9th, so a little time before that. And both golf teams are in action. The men finish runner up at the Shark Invitational down further south in Florida. Carlos Marrero finished fifth overall there. They are hosting the Copperhead Championships at Innisbrook, a little far from home, but they're still the host team. The women are in action down in St. Leo. So busy time as always for Argo Athletics. Keep up with all the activities and all the goings on at GoArgos.com. Again, we are out on the road for a football game at West Georgia. One o'clock kickoff locally here in Pensacola. Two Eastern time we'll be on the radio with you on ESPN Pensacola with a pregame show starting at 1230. Listen to us and then we'll see you again right here next week on the Coach Cynic Show.